I yo, I ain't go front. Let me know in the comment section right now. If you was in the NBA, what would you nickname yourself? What would you nickname yourself if you was in the NBA, bro? I'm trying to figure out. I think I'd be like, I mean, I'm I mean, it really don't get better than Gabos, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just. But I, right, yo, we got how NBA players got their nickname. And they said the most cringiest thing about nicknames is like, yo, nicknames aren't something you call yourself. You got to wait till someone anoints you that nickname. And then you just kind of got to run with it. Man, hell with that, bro. I'm coming up with my own shit, bro. Like the hell? Ain't nobody called Kobe Black Mama. Kobe came up with that shit himself, right? Nicknames add flavor to the game. And if we're being honest, it's hey. easier to say Greek Freak than Antetokounmpo. Right. Greek freak is cold, Some players though. become so synonymous with their nicknames, you actually forget their real names. This is how NBA players got their nicknames. Not none of these guys playing to start today. off with than the answer himself, Allen Iverson. When AI first came to the NBA, one of his friends said that when Jordan retired, the league would be in trouble from a marketing standpoint, and that he, well, he was the answer to their prayers. And shortly Jeez. thereafter, Iverson and his friend went to a tattoo shop and got the answer on his arm. Like Iverson, Robert Williams also has a big arm tattoo which says loyalty however that that's not his nickname robert williams is better known as the time lord i mean sounds pretty cool right well funny enough williams got his nickname by constantly being late oversleeping at an introductory press conference when he got drafted and subsequently who cares about his nickname i promise you absolutely nobody bruv why is he on the list bro come on man i thought we, how we go from a Come on, bro. We just went from AI to Robert Williams. Bruh. Come on, son. Missing a flight to Boston, as well as the team's first practice. <laughs> the dude operated on his own time. And this next nickname also belongs to a former Celtic. And this one spread like the wildfire. Truth. Because once it was said, it took only 24 hours to become a household name. After Paul Pierce dropped 42 on the Lakers in 2001, Shaq, he said this. My name is Shaquille O'Neal. And Paul Pierce is the mother truth as soon as Shaq said this all his friends and fans started calling paul pierce the truth and oh, wow. let's be honest he is still the truth today however pierce wasn't the only superstar whom Shaq blessed with a nickname Shaq when O'Neal got pierce traded to miami nickname? it did not take long for him to give Dwayne wade his new nickname the due flash. to his unreal speed yeah. and quickness Shaq started calling wade the flash and Shaq, well he was also pretty famous for calling chris anderson birdman 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 <laughs> but you know it wasn't really Shaq who gave birdman this nickname it actually came from his team he started calling him that because of his absolutely crazy wingspan and unreal blocking prowess of course anderson would also later pay homage to his nickname with a tattoo that said free bird and even Shaq's colleagues on inside the nba are no strangers to giving out nicknames you see in the early 2000s when the matrix movies came out kenny smith compared sean marion to neo due to his speed and reflexes and pretty soon everybody started calling marion the, the matrix as for some other players they got their nicknames from their jersey number like CP3 or PG13. But the best nickname involving a jersey number belonged to the greatest Come on. player. Come on, man. If you don't know this, you too young. AK-47? Andre Kirlenko. The initials that was cold. AK and the number 47 on the that jersey made it pretty easy to get his nickname. But yeah. to make things even crazier, cold. Kirlenko was born in Izhevsk, like the literal town where the AK-47 rifle was manufactured. And while it's generally uncool to give yourself a nickname, you get a pass if you're Kobe Bryant. You see, when explaining That's what I'm saying. how he attacks the basket, Kobe compared himself to a black mamba, one of the quickest and most venomous snakes in the world. I am that killer snake. You know, I'm stone cold, man. And while Kobe was one of the most legendarily good NBA players, the most legendarily bad NBA player became one of the most famous, partly because he made a joke with Kobe's nickname. Brian Scalabrini often joked about his lack of athleticism, and during one presser, he called himself white the Mamba. White Mamba as a counterpart to Kobe's nickname. You see, the idea behind the White Mamba came to Brian when he was wearing white Kobe shoes and said that the shoes were called White Mamba Ones. Another non-superstar who everyone knows about is Nick Young. And just like Scalabrini and Kobe, Young gave himself the nickname Swaggy P. One version of the story is that God came to Nick in a dream and told him the nickname himself. I never the felt other, that. Like, th that nickname ain't cold at all, that bro. Is, is that his friends started calling him Swaggy due to his fashion sense. And Come on, son. You're a grown man calling yourself swaggy. Uh, 
Leave that for the TikTokers, bro. He just added the P. When asked what the P means, Nick really wouldn't tell. But based on his exploits that were revealed to us by D'Angelo Russell, we have a, a pretty good idea of what Pause. Ah, hey, and yo. Speaking of eggplants, if we said the nickname Chocolate Thunder or Double D, would you think of some adult film star or a basketball player? Well, if you guessed the latter, you would be correct because it belonged to Daryl Dawkins, the first NBA player who came to the league directly from high school. Dawkins was one of the funniest characters oh, in wow. NBA history, and he gave himself a plethora of nicknames over the years, including Dr. Duncan Stein, Master of Disaster, and Sir Slam. But his most famous nickname, the Chocolate Thunder, well, it was actually given to Daryl by none other than Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder used to come to the ball games, and they would have a guy sitting with him, and the guy would be telling him what's going on in the game, and he would say, hey, the big chocolate guy just put down a thunder dunk, the chocolate guy with another monster dunk, and that's why Stevie Wonder started calling me Chocolate Thunder, which is pretty funny that you get your basketball nickname from a guy who never could see you play. And speaking wow. of chocolate, we can't forget Jason Williams, who threw some of the nastiest times ever seen on NBA floors. Because of his super attractive style of play, he earned the cult nickname White Chocolate. Williams was, of course, white, but he played like he was one of the Harlem Globetrotters, so he got the nickname White Chocolate, given to him by a Sacramento Kings PR employee. And gotta be one of the best passers in NBA history is called the Chosen One or the King. The name King James was widespread oh. by Nike when they signed LeBron in 2003. But LeBron himself was the king long before that, after he won his first high school championship in 19. Man lived up to the, the name, fans man. Of Akron, well, they started calling him King, and it stuck. One of LeBron's best friends and main rivals in the NBA is Kevin Durant, aka KD, aka the Slim Reaper. But Durant, yeah, he really never. Nobody ever called him Slim Reaper. I dare anybody to tell me when have you ever heard someone refer to him as the Slim Reaper. I knew about that nickname, but that shit lasted about, like, what? We still call him the Slim Reaper? I thought it was just KD. Like that last nickname. When asked about the origins of it, KD simply said, Because I'm skinny and I do my work at night. However, these days, most people are using Easy Money Sniper as his nickname, as per his Instagram handle. And KD recently said that his mom used to have a crush on this guy named Hakeem Olajuwon, a man who they called The Dream. He was nicknamed the That's Dream a cold nickname. I go hold you. so effortlessly that his coach said it yeah. looked like a dream. And seven years later, after Hakeem became the number one pick in the NBA, there was another first overall pick who had one, one of the funniest nicknames ever. Larry Johnson was the first pick of the 1991 draft the rookie of the year and a two-time all-star johnson was not shy to get in front of the cameras and he's mostly remembered for his role in the original space jam however his nickname didn't come because of some bugs bunny reference and in fact stems from larry's role in somewhat bizarre converse commercials where he was dressed as mrs doubtfire or Medea, if you like Tyler Perry. Larry embraced I vaguely the remember that commercial. that he played in the commercials, and that's how most people called him for the rest of his career. But probably one of the weirdest origin stories of someone's Rip nickname Hamilton. belongs to Richard Rip, Rip Hamilton, who got his nickname from his father after he was constantly ripping his diapers as a baby. Oof, yikes, that must have smelled bad. However, it is one thing to get a cool sounding nickname, but then there are those guys that really become their nickname. I mean, their nickname literally becomes them, and nobody Magic. calls them by their real name anymore. Now, granted, there aren't many people who can say that, but for Irvin Johnson, aka Magic, I mean, it, it suited him like a hand to a glove. Johnson was first called Magic when he was a star at Everett High School in Michigan. He was given the nickname by a sports writer who had just seen the 15-year-old dominate the game with 36 Jeez. points, 16 rebounds, and 16 assists. Now, Magic with, with the fro. Magic with the fro is wild, son. Damn. Six points. 16 rebounds and 36, 16, 16 assists 16. with Shit. crazy no look and behind the back passes but when magic first came to the nba there was one superstar more hey! famous than all of the others his name dr. was dr j Irving, but everyone called him dr j or another just cold the doctor. nickname and I like hold magic you. julius got his nickname in high school as well one of irving's teammates was called the professor so he found it fitting that irving gets called the doctor because of his surgeon-like precision but when it comes to multiple nicknames there's no player in the 
the NBA that comes close to Shaquille oh, yeah, yeah. O'Neal, who invented Shaq. most of his alter egos by himself. The Diesel, the Big Aristotle, Shaqtis, Shaq Fu, the Big Shamrock, and of course, Superman, which he was very reluctant to share with Dwight Howard, but that that's a story for another video. Shaq's dear, dear friend Can't Charles Barkley also all, bro. had multiple nicknames, but there are three that really, really stand out. The Round Mound of Rebound. That one is pretty self-explanatory. He got that nickname in college. I go for that's trash. Over 300 pounds while being the best rebounder in the NCAA. That's what they would call a Barkley in his prime? His jaw-dropping skills inspired one writer to call okay. him Sir Charles, even though Barkley was never really knighted. And I mean, Barkley liked that nickname, but he yeah, hated Charles. to be called Charlie. And when he played for Phoenix, his coach, Paul Westfall, randomly started to call him Chuck. And soon, well, it stuck. And oh, now Chuck. Yeah, everybody, everybody calls him Chuck. Calls him Chuck or the Chuckster. Barkley's teammate on the Dream Team, Mr. Larry Bird, was named Larry. Larry Legend even before his legendary career was over, given to him by reporter Peter Vesey. And Bird's other famous nickname, Larry, well, he actually gave it to himself. When the media asked him why he doesn't love the attention like his arch rival, Magic Johnson, Larry simply said, I am just a hick from French Lick, Indiana. And this name, that stayed with him forever. Of course, you all know we can't the talk about Bird and Magic Lick. without mentioning Michael Jordan, who also had a few nicknames himself. We have to start out with the name on all his sneakers, Air. And if you watch the Ben Affleck movie called Air, then you know that the nickname came from his agent, David Falk. Nike's just developed these new running shoes that have air technology that is supposed to cushion your feet. And it's a double entendre in the way Michael Jordan plays basketball, in the air. People okay. later started calling Jordan his airness. But one of the nicknames that he gave himself was Black Jesus. I have 10 and he has four points, right? I'm doing all this talking, he's like, okay. End of the game in the second half, he ended up with 44. <laughs> and I ended up with 12. And as he's Jeez. walking off, he's like, be sure and be careful, you never talk to black Jesus like that. Okay? <laughs> But you see, Jordan wasn't the first NBA player to be called Black Jesus. The original, the OG nickname, belonged to Earl the Pearl Monroe, who got nicknamed Jesus, which was, was absolutely beautifully explained, and he got game. You know what they call him? What? Jesus. That's what they call him, Jesus, because he was the truth. Mm. After the movie came out, Ray Allen often got called by his character in the movie. And when the NBA experimented with nicknames on jerseys, Allen's jersey actually said Jesus Shuttlesworth. But while the nicknames became more common in the modern era, some old school ballers had some pretty unique names as well. Wilt Chamberlain, well, he was called the Big Dipper because he regularly had to actually dip his head down to avoid banging his head on the doorframe. I heard they called him the Big Dipper for some other reasons back in the day. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm saying there's a, there's a couple of LA stories with a couple of you know scarlets here and there. Like I go from the stories I've heard about old man Will, my son got busy. You want to talk about taking full advantage of of the Laker brand? This nigga was different. Dipper, son. because he regularly had to actually dip his head I ain't gonna hold you. Yo, Will was different. Jerry West was the first who was nicknamed Mr. Clutch due to his clutch gene, especially after the half court buzzer beater in the NBA Finals. Well, after the NBA put his silhouette on its logo, West is commonly it's referred crazy. to now as the logo which I think is way cooler. However, while some players get called by their nicknames by commentators or are even mentioned by their nicknames in third person, they, they really don't get called that by their friends or their teammates. You see, when somebody needed Jerry West for something they didn't say, hey, Mr. Clutch, come over here. Or when somebody's talking to Joel Embiid, they won't call him the process. But then there are those nicknames that become so embodied with a person that you use that moniker so much that you actually forget their real name. Penny Hardaway's real name was Ann Fernie, but not even his mother calls him Ann Fernie. Penny got the nickname from his grandma. When he was born, she referred to him as Pretty Baby. However, because of her southern accent, Pretty started to sound like Penny. Another player who's always referred to by his nickname Big is Baby. Big Baby Davis. His real name is Glenn, but again, nobody called him that. Worst nickname of all time, Davis bro. was always very, very emotional and was always complaining. And when he was just nine years old, his coach told him, stop crying, you big baby. Now, funny enough, Davis's coach with the Celtics was also named Glenn. But just like Davis, nobody calls Doc Rivers by his real name. And all he had to do to earn that nickname was come to his first college basketball practice in a Dr. J t-shirt. And because he was so athletic, soon everybody just started calling him Doc. And the name 
it just stuck. And for a guy who is synonymous with both those Glens is Kevin Garnett. First, because I'm not even gonna hold you. I thought his first name was Doc Rivers, bro. I, I thought his full name was Doc Rivers. I. I'm today years old hearing that. He literally made Big Baby Davis cry during a game. Jeez. And because he solidified Rivers' coaching Hold career. Hold on, what? And for a said? guy who is synonymous with both oh, those Glens is Kevin Garnett. First, because he literally made Big Baby Davis cry during a game. And because he solidified Rivers' coaching I career. Big proving Davis, bro. Anything's possible! KG was known by the nickname The Kid when he first came to Minnesota because, again, he came directly from high school. High school but yeah. soon he started hey! absolutely dominating, after which the Timberwolves commentator dubbed him The Big Ticket. And it was pretty I fitting KG, because he bro. was literally the sole reason why the Timberwolves fans paid tickets to see the games. And a quick glance at some current players, there are really a lot of fantastic nicknames the Joker. in the NBA right now, like Grand Theft Alvarado, Tsunami Poppy, or Hillbilly Kobe, the college nickname of Austin Reeves. And if you wish to find out more amazing stories from the NBA, please subscribe to our channel and we will make your yeah. wish come true. Some of these nicknames were cool. Some of them were lame. Like, I couldn't stand Glenn Baby Davis, bro. That's probably one of the worst nicknames for... I just wasn't a fan of this dude, bro. You just wasn't made of the real shit, bro. But, like, there's a couple of guys out there that I... We miss to this day, man. But this was how NBA players got their nicknames. I'm gonna holler at you guys in the next video. Y'all let me know in the comment section. If y'all in the NBA, what y'all tagging yourselves? I gotta hear it, bro. And y'all better be able to hoop, too. You know what I'm saying? But, till next video, man. Hit the like and subscribe button for more content. I'm your host, Gabo Say So, man. I'm gonna holler at you guys in the next video, bro. See you guys at the top. I'm out.